Hi, this is Sandra Champlain. You know, today I went to the movies to kind of escape myself, to kind of escape the life that I led today. I haven't been feeling well the past two days, and I think most of it is because I've been thinking I should be doing this or I should be doing that, and instead I just wanted to escape. So as an escape, I chose to go to the movies today. Today's October 12th, 2011, and I saw the movie 50-50. Why? Because it got great reviews. Little did I know that it was a story of a 27-year-old man who was diagnosed with cancer, cancer in his spine. And it was a beautiful story of a friendship, love lost, love found, all that. But why I chose to record this today is that my dad died of cancer on May 11, 2010. And during the movie, there were so many scenes of being in the hospital. So many scenes of fear, so many views of chemotherapy and the pain and the struggle that people go through, both physically diagnosed with cancer and then the emotional part, knowing that your life will come to an end. So it's rather ironic that today I chose to escape myself and the opposite just happened. I found myself. I wasn't really lost but there's a big part of me that's been put on hold. Back in around 2005, I did some studying, all based out of my fear about dying. No one had told me I was going to die. I didn't know anybody close to me that had died. But for most of the past 20 years, I have had a profound fear of dying. It led me to do some major research on the question, is there life after death? And in my travels, I worked with a world-famous medium who I took a course with out in California. And lo and behold, I was able to say accurate details of the person whose hands I was holding. I knew details about their relatives. I knew their names. I saw their faces. And I knew for myself that we really don't die. After I took that course back in 2005, I went into hiding. I didn't want to tell anybody about it. You know why? Because they'd say, Sandra, do me. Who do you see around me? And I was scared to death to have people laugh at me, to get it wrong, and to be thought of as a weirdo or a fraud or a scam. But as time went on, the message in my brain was to keep searching. And a few years ago, I found a wonderful woman named Reverend Rita Berkowitz at a spiritualist church in Quincy, Massachusetts. And she told me something pretty profound. She said, I had a big message on earth to get out. And I've, I'd studied with this world famous medium named Doreen Virtue that my mission was to teach and to help other people heal. And I think that might have been 2005, 2006, and we're now in 2011. I created a website several years ago called wedontdie.com with all the research that I've found about our soul survival. And as great as it was, did I shout it from the rooftops? No. In fact, the joke of it is I didn't even finish the website until I met a wonderful dating coach. I was ready to get out back in the dating field again. And she said, if people Googled your name, if they Googled Sandra Champlain, what would they find? And I thought, oh my God, I've got that website lingering out there. And I didn't want anybody to think I was crazy. So I spent a weekend and I updated it. All the information I have about life after death. I studied scientific information. I studied with a physicist. There's some really, really cool stuff out there. But I did it all just so I could meet a man and have him not think I was crazy. I'm not crazy. I know we don't die. When I went to Reverend Rita Berkowitz at her little spiritualist church, I was in for something that changed my life. She had a husband and wife team do something called electronic voice phenomena. And that what that is, is taking a digital voice recorder 
and recording white noise or just maybe if you were between two stations on a radio station and you recorded the noise and then when you play it back have voices appear now I thought this was pretty crazy but I listened to it the husband and wife that gave the speech had both lost children in previous marriages due to death and they told the story of leaving this digital tape recorder on and then leaving the room all that was on was a fan playing in the background. About 20 minutes later, they returned to the room. They pressed play on their tape recorder. And what was on there is what the gentleman played at this church. It was pretty scratchy, but you could hear giggling. And after the giggling you heard, you heard, Daddy, don't be scared. We're still here with you. And I have to tell you that that riveted my life. I wanted it to be real, but I thought, oh my God, there's no way. But if it is, I can help others. And they won't think I'm crazy. So I bought myself a digital tape recorder. And I bought myself a book called There Is No Death and There Are No Dead by Tom and Lisa Butler, who run what's called the American Association of Electronic Voice Phenomena, AAEVP. I started and I pressed record and I tried to record some white noise. And when I pressed play, it dawned on me. If somebody starts talking back to me, it's going to scare the heck out of myself. And I'm not ready for that. So I put away the book and I put away the tape recorder. I thought never to touch it again. Fast forward several months. It was around Halloween time, I believe 2006. My mind is not clear on the dates because truthfully, I've never really wanted to talk about it. I say I have, but again, I'm afraid what you will think of me. But after seeing this movie, I'm going to tell you exactly what I know and exactly what I think. So Halloween time, whatever year it was, 2005, 2006, I needed to get away. And I chose the Omega Center in upstate New York, Rhinebeck. I had a particular weekend in mind. And being that I battled my weight and battled overeating, I knew I could go to the Omega Center and eat healthy, go on their nature walks, and find some inspiration. But on that particular weekend in October... Guess who was there for the very first time? Tom and Lisa Butler. The creators of the AAEVP. I was scared to death. I remember telling the taxi cab driver why I was going. And he thought I was insane. He was scared for me. But he also gave me his email so I would let him know what happened. There were five or six of us in the room. And Tom and Lisa Butler are extraordinary. They too are spiritualist ministers or were back in the day. And we did every day what seemed like a seance. We held hands. There were just a few of us in the group. We thought of our deceased loved ones. We asked them to be in the room. We closed our eyes. We imagined that it, there was a great deal of energy around us. And then we'd stop talking and we recorded the noise in between our speaking. At the end of the recording, Tom Butler would take the recordings and upload them into his computer. This way, we could listen. So many of these voices are just whispers in the background noise. And through his computer, you could play it loud, repeat it, and hear messages. Well, I don't know how it, this happened, but after one of my recordings, Tom and Lisa could hear the voices within my recordings. Things like, we have a message for your mother, Marion. How's Betsy? It's Johnny. Now, my mom's name is Marion. My grandmother, before she passed, was Betsy. And her husband was Johnny. So I knew clear, even though I couldn't hear these voices, that there was something very real in this. 
The Saturday night before class, I turned into my cabin. I had a roommate, but she was out for dinner. And I was sitting alone on my bed with just a ton of raindrops outside. And I had my little digital tape recorder. And I was holding it out just like I'm holding out my iPhone right now. And I imagined that my aunt and my uncle and my two deceased grandparents were by the foot of the bed. The bed. And I said in my voice, thinking I'm talking to myself, I said, if you guys are really out there, and if I'm really supposed to make a difference, I need you to talk loud. So I said, I'm going to press record now, and then I'll say goodnight. I pressed the record button. I let it record for a minute, and then I said goodnight. I didn't have the luxury of having my computer there. All I had was my set of headphones and my digital tape recorder. So I pressed play and I listened. And at second number 46, I heard something besides raindrops. And I pressed stop and rewind. I listened again. And I hear a man's voice say, very marbled, good night, with a sound after that. And I listened again, and I heard, good night, another noise, and a sound after that. After hearing the recording several times, I actually was scared to death. I went to bed that night feeling scared, feeling, am I not alone? Are there people around me all the time that I just can't see? I wasn't so comfortable knowing the information I had. My brain couldn't get around it. I bring it into class the next morning, almost in denial that I got what I got. I presented it to Tom and Lisa Butler and the other folks that were in the room. And mind you, these folks had lost either their children due to death, a spouse. Tom and Lisa listened. And what they heard was this. After the word goodnight was the name Sandra. A man's voice said, goodnight, Sandra. Followed by two women saying, goodnight, goodnight. Tom and Lisa were excited because someone heard a voice. It's called a Class A. Most of the EVPs are whispers within whispers or Class B or Class C. And this was a loud, clear, good night, Sandra. And good night, good night. Well, the people in the group were thrilled because even though they didn't hear from their relatives, they knew that it's possible. And now we're in 2011, and maybe five years later, do you think I've shouted it from the rooftops? No. Certainly you can go to wedontdie.com and find my information. But I was stopped. I was stopped only to a certain point. I started telling people what I was up to and what I did. And I actually had the courage in one class that I took out in California to get up in front of several hundred people and tell an abbreviated version of the story. And what ended up happening is people would come to me on breaks and they said, I've lost my mom. I've lost my dad. I've lost my sister. Can we do a recording? So I would take these folks into my hotel room at the breaks. And I'd turn on the shower to get the background noise of water because that's what worked in the cabin. And over and over and over, messages would come through. And this time I could hear them. 99% of the messages were, I love you, and the person's name. There were other messages as well, things that weren't important to me, but they knew the importance. There was one man, his name was Billy. And you know what was interesting? It wasn't just the recording that made a difference. Is when I closed my eyes and I held his hands before we did the recording, I saw a small girl in my mind, in my mind's eye, 
with two braids, you know, like ponytails, and, and bangs, and blue eyes, and the gap between her teeth. And she was just an adorable little girl that I thought I was making up in my mind. Well, when I played the recording back, it said, Hi, Billy. It's Sue. She says, Remember the game Clue we used to play? So I told this to the gentleman. He couldn't hear the message, but he heard the hello, and I love you. And I described to him the image of the little girl that I saw. He told me that's exactly what his little sister looked like. So again, it's 2011. Have I shouted it from the rooftops? I have not. But after seeing this movie, 50-50, which I recommend, it's time for me to come clean with you about who I am and what I'm really up to. I know that we don't die. I believe we are eternal souls here on earth to have a human experience. I believe here on earth is the only place that we can experience emotions. I believe it's the only place in the universe that we can experience touch and sight and taste and hearing and smell. I had my dad come to me just before I fell asleep one night. And I think I'm talking to myself, but I know it's him. And he says, sweetie, where I am is great. But you can't hug where we are. And you'll never know how great that feels. We don't die dot com. That's where I have my research. That's where I have the evidence. And I'm not here to tell you anything. I want you to read it for yourself and make your own decisions. But what if, what if we are human here? We are eternal souls having a human experience. I believe that our senses stop us from being all that we can be. Our ego, that little voice inside your head, that says you're stupid, you can't do it, you can do it, you're worrying about this, you're worrying about that. All of that takes us away from our divine nature. And do you know when we can connect the best with our divine nature? It's in the present moment. It's when you close your eyes, either before you go to bed at night or the first thing in the morning. And when you can just not think when you can calm that little voice in your mind, just even for a few seconds, tune out everything, and you're really being tuned in to all of it. In that point, in that present moment, anybody who meditates, any of these spiritual gurus, any psychics, any mediums, that's when they can see your deceased loved ones, is in that present moment. I have nothing different than you folks do. And you have nothing different than me. Our minds just get very busy. And we don't go to that place. My dad died almost a year and a half ago. And I can tell you it was extremely painful. It was painful for him. He went through a tremendous battle with cancer. In his last three days of his life, he was screaming mostly muffled towards the end because he was so high on medications he couldn't speak. There are people now that are dying. There are people now that have been told they've had cancer and they're scared. They're scared for their life. They're scared for their family. But what if they knew? What if they knew that we can't die? That we never really die? How would their experience be different? I know I don't have all the answers. I don't have the answer to pain, why we have to feel it, both emotional pain and physical pain. I sure would like to know that answer. But what if we are eternal souls here having a human experience? What then? 
How long did it take me to wake up to my divine nature? How long did it take me to finally open my mouth and talk to people about it? Guess what, folks? You're the first ones. This is the very first time I'm publicly sharing this. And I'm 45 years old. Who are you? And what's your life for? The universe, or God, or whoever you want to call it, keeps giving me challenges. And one of those challenges to get me out there to speak was being with my dad through his death. You know, the hardest part of my dad's death was not losing my dad, but was losing my brother and my two sisters who I love dearly. The fights, the anger, the feuds about stupid stuff. And do you know, it's almost a year and a half and they're still not talking to me. And do you know that I love them and their view of me is probably just like my view of them? We're fabulous people and something happened. That experience led me to study the grief process. What in the world could happen in our brains that four loving siblings would stop talking to each other. And folks, I thought I was going to do this first for my own peace of mind, but it'll help everybody. I learned that when you grieve, it can be the grief of losing someone to death. It can be the grief of being told someone's about to die. It could be the grief felt over your marriage breaking up. It could be the grief felt when you lose your home or you lose your job or you've had some major change. There's something called grief and it is extremely painful. Our brain has to readjust to the new surroundings and that's why we grieve and ultimately it makes us stronger. However, in this grieving process, the part of the mind that shuts down in order to grieve is the same part that controls your communication, it controls your perception, and it controls your memory. And why is this important? Because when you are having conversations with people, whether it was my siblings or your spouse or whomever, you think you're communicating to the best of your abilities. You think what you're speaking and what you are hearing is the truth. But what I have to tell you is it may not be. Our perception is off. Our memory is off. We are not communicating properly. I've spoken with people that haven't talked to their siblings in over 20 years due to what happened when their mother died. I don't want it to be 20 years till I see my nieces and my nephews. A big I'm sorry to my siblings, but also a big I'm sorry to the people in this world. The other half of my message is, we are here on earth to love, to learn, and to forgive. We can forgive ourselves, and we can forgive others. I figure there's a real good reason that the universe keeps putting this in front of me. And especially on my day off, when I choose to send go to a movie, that I pick a movie like 50-50. It's finally time for me to be awake. And it's finally time for me to tell people what I'm up to. If you're going through any of that grief I was just telling you about, I would like you to go to www.survivegrief.com and download my free audio called How to Survive Grief. No more to grieving the loss of someone that's still alive. No more of being afraid. No more of not having the life you are meant to live. Our life is short. What I've read is that there's zillions of souls just waiting, to, waiting for a chance 
to live in a human body. And that being the case, why don't we remember who we really are and get busy? So I'm going to ask you to make a commitment to check out my website. It just so happens that we don't die.com and survivegrief.com are the same website. Check it out. Take some time to digest it. And I'm going to ask you to email me after you've taken a look at it and after you've gotten that you are a divine soul, a divine soul here having a human experience. You are here to learn. You're here to love. You're here to experience. And you're here to share something with the world. What is that something? What is that something that lights you up so much and gives you so much pleasure? I want to know what it is. And I want to support you in having your dreams fulfilled. And do you know when you go towards your dreams and you are lit up and inspired about who you are and what you're doing, you actually give other people the inspiration to go after their dreams. You can reach me at Sandra at SurviveGrief.com. Take my challenge. Wake up to your nature, your divine nature. Play the game with me. Let's live one hell of a life. Let's make all our deceased relatives who are still floating about cheering us on. Let's make them proud. So with that, I thank you for watching. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Until we talk again. Bye.